Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. And it is time for your Leeds versus Brighton pre-match chat. Before we do get into today's video, as always, please smash a like on this video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you are new as well. Of course, get your comments in and make sure you hit that notification bell as I do a number of live streams throughout the week as well as watch alongs for Leeds United games. And you don't want to miss any of that, so get the notification bell smashed and you will be notified when I am live. Um, but let's get into, obviously, Saturday evening's kickoff against Brighton and Hove Albion. Look, Leeds United do not have the best record against Brighton. Brighton have won eight of the last nine fixtures between uh, these two clubs. They've kept a clean sheet in the last five home matches against Leeds in all competitions. Um, for me, Graham Potter seems to have... Uh, Marcelo Bielsa's number a little bit and they are very much a bogey team for us um, and it's it's one that I'm <laughs> it's madness but if you gave me a point away at Brighton I'd snap your hands off which I know not a lot of league fans will be happy with that but it's just where we currently are that's where I see us currently are our current fortunes that I'm like looking at Brighton and saying give me a point now um, but that's props to Brighton as well, though, because I do like what Graham Potter has done at Brighton. They started the season really well. Um, and I have even said on, on Before the Whistle Blows on the Premier League preview and review shows, they seem to be a little bit of a surprise package. They were actually scoring goals. However, the old Brighton seems to have come back into for you know to the uh, come back into fruition because they are now on a seven game winless run in the Premier League. Uh, drawing five and losing two. Listen, it's still points on the boards, though. They've had some some good good draws against top teams, um, but it'll be a definite, you know, tough nut to crack um, for, for us. Although they are still struggling for goals, and um, like I said just a second ago, they, they made improvements on, on previous seasons. Um, but for me, the first goal in this game is absolutely huge. Um, and Brighton do worry me, uh, I can't lie. I'm not expecting them you know, to be a gluttony of goals, but I just think back to each time we've played Brighton, specifically under Bielsa, he, Potter's just negated anything we've been able to, to come up with. Um, and if I think back to games this season, if we look at Southampton as a, as, a, as a game, as a barometer, we struggled to create anything. We were woeful in that game. And you could argue the Brighton fixture last season that scuppered our chances of Europe, really. We went on that fantastic run. We played Brighton, they beat us 2-0. Danny Welbeck gets on the score sheet. In that game, we were just as woeful. Probably, OK, Southampton was worse, but Brighton was a very close second for one of Bielsa's, you know, worst games, in my opinion, anyway. Because we were flying, we were, we were knocking out and um, taking on big teams and getting results. And then we played against Brighton and it was absolutely terrible. Um, I know previously, the way Potter set them up, it's been like a four, uh, sorry, a three, four, three. Um, and I would expect something similar. Um, although they have switched it up a number of times this season, I'm going to give you a lineup again. It could be a number of different options. I think any Brighton fans watching this will agree. One thing's for sure, though, Sanchez will be back in goal. He's in my FPL team. I can't lie. I think he's done really well this season. Uh, Dan Byrne and Welbeck are the only real injury concerns for Brighton. And obviously, San Sanchez back from suspension. Uh, back three likely to be of Dunk, Webster and Duffy. Duffy's had a bit of a renaissance uh, since returning from Celtic on loan and, uh, and been smashing it this season. He's another one that's in the FPL team. So it shows, um, you know, um, how good Brighton are that, that I've got in the FPL team. Although that's probably not a good barometer because I'm not great at it. Uh, Tarek Lamptey, I expect to start as well, obviously back from injury. Will he be ready for a full 90? I'm not sure, but he, he's played a few games recently and he's he's an exceptional talent and someone we need to be wary of. A new signing, Cucurella as well, at, at left wing back. Um, really impressed when they brought him in. I thought it was a great signing and he's, he's uh, uh, proved to be the case. I think he's been a, a great, great signing for them. Um, in the middle, again, it could be a number of options. It could be Moda, it could be Pascal Gross, but I'm going to say Basuma and Lalana uh, with a front three of Neil Morpé, uh, Lissandro Trossard, and maybe Solly March. But again, it could switch up. You could have Veltman at the back. You could have McAllister in that front three. I genuinely don't know. Um, but Morpe, I think, will play in this game. He seems to be a bit of a... Um, he has a bit of needle for Leeds United. 
Um, we know that from his time at Brentford. We know that he said he couldn't wait to celebrate against us that time in the, the first season under Bielsa. I think, think something had gone off after that Brentford game and Victor Orta had had words and they said they couldn't wait to play us. And, uh, uh, and obviously they won that game and um, Neil Mopé got on the score sheet that day as well. And he seems to have some real need of a lead. So I think he'll start in this game. And and, and he's someone that does concern me because, like I say, he loves a goal uh, against Leeds United. But again, they might not line up 3 4 3. You know, Potter switched it up. He's a great tactician. He is a great manager. I think it'll be a fascinating tactical battle between him and Bielsa. It might not translate to a good game of football for the watching eye, but it may just be that we might cancel each other out. As I say, I expect this goal uh, game sorry, to be very tight um, and it could be 1-0 one, one either way. It may end up being a draw, um, but I think the first goal, as I said earlier, is very, very important. And normally, you know, under Leeds United, when you get that first goal, we do really well. However, that's been flipped on its head this season for sure. Leeds United became the first club of the Premier League season to lose twice uh, when leading at half time. Uh, we've been winning three games just just for a bit of context at half time and only won one of them uh, and lost two. Uh, I think that would win possibly against Norwich, although they scored immediately after, so it can't be, can it? Um, yeah, but obviously Spurs most recently leading at half time, we lose the game 2 0. And that's that's something we're not used to under Bielsa. I think a lot of the time, second half, we expect him to improve, we expect him to work whatever team out we're facing tactically, we come out stronger, we get results, we go in front, we get results, but this season has totally flipped that on the head. Um, so although I say the third goal is very important, um, historically this season, I know we're only 12 games in, it hasn't really uh, served as well, but I do think in this game, between these two sides, the tactical battle, Brighton not scoring a lot of goals, um, it, it it's going to be it's going to be first goal wins it for me, uh, and if Brighton score, you know I think we'll struggle to break them down. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope we get that first goal, and I hope we have you know I hope it's not like anything I've just mentioned. Um, just a bit of his history as well for you, Brighton. I've actually been winning at both half time and full time in the last four home matches against Leeds United in all competitions. Not a great record at all against Brighton. The fact that they're on a seven game winless run in the Premier League just leads me to believe. They're going to shit houses, if you could call it that. A one nil shit house. I don't know. Um, with them, if they do indeed line up with a three four three, although it might not look like this on paper, I think Leeds United will line up with a four four two. We have heard, which is massive, the fact that Shackleton, Rafinha, and Rodrigo are all available for this match. Luke Aylin is close. He will play in the under twenty threes on Monday. And Cock and Bamford are in their final period of recovery. I still think it's a little bit of a wait for them to, I can't lie. Um, but I think there's going to be changes. It's probably going to be harsh on, on two players, really, that I think will drop out. Because for me, Rafinha and Rodrigo, Rafinha definitely, um, you know, deserves to. But I think Rafinha and Rodrigo are going to come straight back into this side. And I expect us to line up with the 4-4-2, although it might not look at that on graphics. But I think in-game, that's how it will pan out to be. And I think Dallas will play at right back. I know Shackleton's back, but I don't see him coming in so soon. I think the centre-back part will be Lorente and Cooper and left-back will be Junior Thurpo, which can only mean that Pascal Strauch will drop out. And I'm not advocating that. A lot of people will disagree and want him over Cooper or see the performance he's, he's played at left-back and he's probably give us more than what Thurpo has. But I expect Pascal to drop out, which would be very, very harsh because I think he's been phenomenal and he keeps getting better and better and better. And you guys know my thoughts on him. I think when Calvin goes, he takes that role and he takes it with ease. He's literally that good for me. He's just getting better and better. And who can forget, Calvin once said, this guy will be better than me. This guy will be better than me. Um, that was in the Takers Home documentary. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think it will be extremely harsh, and I hope it doesn't happen. But I think Pascal might drop out. I think we'll have Phillips and Forshaw in midfield. I think James will come in uh, on the left wing, and that'll be harsh on Harrison. OK, over the course of the season, he's not been great. But I thought he was really good against Spurs and much more like we're used to seeing. Um, but I think he'll drop out because I think Bielsa prefers Dan James. Rafinha will play on the right. I expect Rodrigo to play behind Joffy Geldart. Um, and I'd be happy with that because I think we've seen enough from Geldart. Um, I would like him to get more game time. 
it may not be the case. You may find that Click might come in and Rodrigo may play in the nine. We'll have to wait and see. But my preferred lineup would be Dallas Lorente Cooper. I would rather go with Thurpo, but it is harsh on on Pascal, Rafinha Phillips, Forshaw, James, and then Geldart and Rodrigo interchanging up top. But that might not be the case. You maybe might see clicking there. Maybe you'll see Shackleton at right back and move Dallas into midfield. Let me know your guys' thoughts in on, on your lineup in the uh, comments below. But it will be harsh on Harrison and Pascal if indeed it goes that way. Um, but like I say, leading up to this game, Saturday evening, high five kickoff, I will be doing a watch along for it. Um, it has to be said that neither side are in good form. Um, and it it wouldn't be a surprise if both teams did cancel each other out. You could see a one all, you could see a nil nil, or a one nil either way. I don't expect there to be over two point five goals in this one. That's just my initial thoughts. But what's for sure, it'll be a fascinating tactical battle between two very good coaches. You know, I'd go as far as to say. I'd like Gary and Potter at Leeds United when Bielsa does move on. I know people disagree with me. I've said that on Twitter and people disagree with me. It's just my personal preference. I think he's an exceptional manager um, and an exceptional tactician. And if you improve the personnel that he has, I think he goes to the very top. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but I do really rate him highly. And he seems to have had Bielsa's number. Hopefully Bielsa can you know, get one back over him. But history isn't on our side. As I said, just to finish, you know, they've kept a clean sheet in the last five home matches against us. They've won eight of the last nine games between um, between us and uh, us and them. And of course, they've been winning at both half-time and full-time in the last four home matches against Leeds United. So history tells me, you know, this is going to be tough, but records and history is there to be broken. But I think I'm going to go for one apiece um, and I take a point. I would take a point at the Amex because we've got two Home fixtures coming up. Crystal Palace will be very tough, but it's one we can win and hopefully we will win. And then Brentford is a must win as well. You guys know I spoke with Lucy midweek. Can't stress the importance of these next three fixtures. They are huge in the context of where we could be come January. We need to get positive results. If we get a win, it is massive, massive point. I will take at this moment in time, just based on where we are in the league. Um, and of course, Teams around us improving, getting better, new managers. We have to get points on the board and we can't really be losing to Brighton if we want to want to stay up. They're a good side, but it's a team we should be winning. So hopefully we can. Um, my heart says 1-0 leads. My head says one apiece. But we'll have to wait and see. I want to know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Please smash a like on the video. Subscribe, sponsor me for November. And enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll see you tonight, hopefully, if you join me for the Premier League preview. Peace out. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds.